Welcome back to the respiratory chain in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokov. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in this video, we're going to go over the function of complexes one and two in the mitochondrial respiratory chain. And the commonality between these two enzyme complexes is that they're both going to contribute to the ubiquinol pool. Okay. The ultimate goal of complexes one and two is to generate reduced coenzyme Q, also called ubiquinol. Okay? And the ubiquinol that is generated from these two enzyme complexes is going to be taken up by complex three and processed there, which we'll talk about in a separate video. But I want to go over these first two uh, protein complexes in the mitochondria. The first one, complex one, is called NADH dehydrogenase. Now there are many enzymes and pathways in biochemistry all over the cell that produce NADH. We could talk about glycolysis that produces two net NADH per glucose. We can also talk about the Krebs cycle which produces three NADH per cycle and then there's other pathways um, certainly beta oxidation uh, which occurs in the mitochondria and then also amino acid oxidation which can produce some NADH as well. All of that NADH is ultimately going to be gathered in the mitochondria and this enzyme NADH dehydrogenase is going to take the electrons from NADH. So here's the NADH that we have and ultimately the NADH is going to be oxidized by NADH dehydrogenase and that's going to give us back our NAD. And we'll talk about other videos, the implications of getting it back that NAD. Suffice to say the electrons from reduced NADH are going to be siphoned into this complex. Now this right here gives our electron flow, which you can also see in the picture. NADH dehydrogenase is a flavor protein, and it's a flavor protein in the sense that it has an FMN, which stands for flavin mononucleotide. So the electrons that are taken from NADH are gonna be transferred initially to FMN, and then it's going to, those electrons are gonna travel through a series of iron sulfur centers. And at the very end uh, of the of the iron sulfur centers, the electrons are going to be transferred to coenzyme Q, shown right here, and that's going to ultimately reduce that to QH2, which is reduced coenzyme Q, or ubiquinol. And that ubiquinol, producing that, is the ultimate goal of this enzyme. And as we said, that ubiquinol is going to be processed by complex 3 in a separate video. One of the other important implications of complex 1 is that it pumps four protons from the matrix down here into the inner membrane space. In fact, all the enzymes we're going to see that are proton pumps pump protons uh, unidirectionally from the matrix into the inner membrane space. Okay, And this is the function of complex one. And one other thing I want to mention because it's very important with respect to this enzyme. Complex one is the only one here that we're going to talk about that takes electrons from NADH. There's a separate enzyme that takes them from FADH2, and that's what we're going to look at now. So complex 2 in the mitochondrial respiratory chain is called succinate dehydrogenase. Now if you've done a study of the Krebs cycle, you might recognize this enzyme, because one of the enzymes about halfway through the pathway is succinate dehydrogenase. It turns out that even though this is a membrane-bound enzyme in the mitochondria, this enzyme is part of the TCA cycle. Okay, so one thing they usually don't mention when you're studying the TCA cycle is that this is the only enzyme in that pathway that is a membrane-bound enzyme. It's actually part of the electron transport chain, and down here at the bottom, you see a from hopefully a familiar TCA cycle reaction. Succinate dehydrogenase's main reaction is to oxidize succinate into fumarate. And the electrons from succinate are going to be taken up by FAD, and that's going to reduce it to FADH2. And also, succinate dehydrogenase is a flavor protein. Now, just like complex one, except for the fact that the electrons are going um, ultimately coming off of succinate directly to the flavin. Okay? Now, the FADH2, or reduced flavin, is going to transfer its electrons through a series of iron sulfur centers. Then those electrons are going to go through a heme, and then the electrons are then going to go into ubiquinone, reducing it to ubiquinol. And that's also going to contribute to the ubiquinol pool. Okay? Now, although two protons are taken from the matrix and incorporated into the coenzyme Q, there is no net pumping of protons by complex two. Okay? In fact, out of the four main complexes we're going to talk about, 
The only one of them that does not pump protons is this one, succinate dehydrogenase. Complexes 1, 3, and 4 pump protons, but this one does not. But overall, what we've seen is that this like complex one also contributes to the ubiquinol pool. And again, that ubiquinol is going to go to complex three and be processed there where it's going to give its electrons ultimately to cytochrome C. And we're going to see that in another video. All right, so hopefully this gave you a little bit of intuition on both of these enzyme complexes, what their function is. Um, and hopefully you see the path of electrons as they flow through here, but hopefully what you see is the commonality. They're both producing reduced ubiquinol, coenzyme Q for complex three, but complex one accepts electrons from NADH and in some way succinate dehydrogenase accepts electrons from FADH2, but those electrons come from succinate. Okay, so make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.